Hello lovelies, in this video the Brilliant Mr Me is going to be looking at reverse percentages. Now this is something that people tend to find a little bit tricky, so use the timestamps to jump into the video wherever you feel most confident, whether you want to start with the medium questions, or whether you want to go straight to the hard question, and then pause the video after the question, look, um, try and do it yourself, and then look at the answers afterwards. So to start with, let's look at the question, the price of a mobile phone, £84, and that's after an 8% discount. What was the original price? Now, the original price, that is going to be 100% of the value of the mobile phone. So when we're looking at an 8% discount, what percentage is that? Well, it's not going to be 8%. 8% of the price of the phone would be a massive discount. It would be very, very cheap. You got off 8%, but taking away 8%. So it's only going to be a small discount. So if we started with 100% and we are taking away 8% for an 8% discount, then we could do a column takeaway. We can borrow one, put it into nine. And the one we borrowed. So that's going to give us 10 take away 8 is 2. And we have the 9. So that is giving us 92. So what that telling us is that 92% is £184. Now, if this was a non calculate method, perhaps we could divide by 92 and find 1% and then multiply by 100 and find 100%. With a calculator, it's a little bit easier. What we're going to do is we're going to write down the number 184. Down the percentage, 92%. And we're going to write that as a decimal. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to divide these two numbers. Now, this looks very, very similar to your regular percentage question with a calculator and normally would multiply in the middle. But because we're working backwards and trying to find the original price, we're going to be dividing instead. So on a calculator, type in 184 divided by 0 0.92 and it should get an answer and it's going to be 200. So the original price was Let's use that method for question two. So question two, we have a £73.60 mobile phone. It's had a 8% discount, which is the same as the previous question. So an 8% discount means that we have 92% of the mobile phone value to pay. So £73 is the value, which is 8% less than the 100%. We want to work backwards and find out the original price. So we're going to divide these two numbers. We can type that into a calculator, so 73.60 divided by 0 0.92 gives us £80. That's the original price of the mobile phone. Perhaps at the end, just make sure it makes sense. Does it make sense that the original was £80 and the discounted version was £73.60? Well, the discounted version is less money, so this looks about right. If you made a mistake, it might be that the discounted version might be worth more money, or it might be worth a ridiculously small amount of money that doesn't really make sense. Now looking at question three, and we have an 11% discount. So we're going to be really careful. We're not using 11% here. We are starting off at 100%. We are going down by the 11%. And a column subtraction is always recommended, just so you don't make any mistakes. Uh, zero take away one, we're going to borrow one. We have to borrow one from the hundreds, so that would go down to nine. We borrowed one, so that would give ten take away one is nine, and nine take away one is eight. So we have 89%. Again, always recommend to do this. If you try and do it in your head, then you might get the wrong answer here, especially if you have to borrow one. That will always send you slightly off with your so the written method. So we have £97.90 is the cost of our mobile phone. That is 89% of the value, writing that as a decimal. And I'm working backwards to get the original cost. So we are doing a division. Type that into a calculator. So 97.90 divided by 0 0.89. And that will give us 
£110. The cuffs are at the units in because we are working with money. So while we don't need those pound signs for the entire set of working out, we do need it in the final answer. Now let's take a look at question four. So we have £139.50 is the cost of a mobile phone. It's a 10% discount. So we're starting with 100%. We've gone down by 10%, so we have 90% left over. We're working backwards to find the original price, so it is a division. So on your calculator, type in 139.50. Divided by zero, nine, zero. That should give you an answer of one hundred and fifty five pounds. Another little tip here is that if you have a question where you have two sets of decimals and you're doing something to them, especially division with two sets of decimals, if you get a whole number answer out, then the chances are that question has been specifically designed to have a whole number answer. Because usually when you're dividing lots and lots of decimal places, you tend to have even more decimal places in your answer. So just watch out for nice whole numbers of your answers. That is a good sign. Now let's take a look at question five. So we have £263.50. We know we're divided and it is a 15% discount. So we're starting at 100%. We're going down by 15%. So 10% less is 90 and another 5% less would be 85%. Again, writing it as a decimal. So type that into calculator, 263.5 divided by 0 0.85. And that gives us 310 as the answer. Moving on to the hard questions, it's a very similar method. So the value of a house is 482,800 pounds. And that is after a 78% increase. Because with the medium questions, mobile phones, when you buy one, they tend to decrease in value. But things like houses, they tend to go up in value over time. So firstly, we're going to write down the number. So 482800. And we're working backwards to try and find the original value. So again, it's going to be a division. So the division or the multiplication, it's nothing to do with it being an increase or a decrease. If it is a reverse question, you're trying to find 100%, it'll be a division. Because as we can see here, medium questions decreases and we're dividing, and the hard questions increases and we're still dividing. Now, the question here is what percentage are we dividing by? And we've got a 78% increase. Now, increase means we're keeping the original value and going up by 78%. So we've started at 100%, we've gone up by 78% so we're adding on 100% to the 78% so we're dividing by 1.78 so it's a percentage given us in the question with a 1 at the start just to represent we're keeping the original 100% you know if a house is going up in price then it will start with 100% of its value and then it will go up by a percentage but you're keeping that original 100% so let's type this into a calculator so 482 800 divided by 1.78. Now, this is going to give us an answer. There's quite a lot of decimal places here, but it's money. So we're going to round it to two decimal places. So I'm getting 271, 235, and then decimal places 0.96. Now, on your calculator, it should say 0.95, but after the 5, you have a 5, so we're going to round up. So our final answer is 271,235. I'm just putting a comma in between every three numbers just to make it a little bit easier to read in the answer. So let's use that method for question two. Let's write down the cost of the house. So 886,600 pounds. We know we're always going to be dividing with these questions. So we're going backwards to find the original value. What is the percentage though? So we're increasing by 34%. So it's going to be 1.34 with an increase. Always add on 100% to represent the original value that we are keeping. So we can type this into a calculator. 886600 divided by 1.34. 
And again, rounding to two decimal places, we're going to have 661641.79. That's going to read 661,641. So question three, let's write down the number, 666800. We are dividing. And it's a 25% increase, so it's 1.25. And we rely on the calculator to do this for us. So 666800 divided by 1.25. And they give us 533440. And we have no decimal places, so there's no pence. So that's going to give us 533,000. 440 pounds. Now, question four, then we're getting a bit confident. We just write the numbers directly into our cap. So we can do 493900 divided by, it'll be 1.27, and that's going to give us, remember the pound sign, 388. 897, and then rounding the pence to two decimal places, we're going to have 64 pence. So our final answer is £388,897.64. But even though we're writing these numbers directly into our calculators now, we do need to, when writing our answer, have every single button that we've pressed on the calculator written on the exam paper. And that just protects you against making mistakes. If you do make a mistake and you've written everything down, you'll get a few marks for your working out. But if everything you did was stored on the calculator, and let's say press one extra button by accident, you're going to get zero marks, and the examiner has no way of doing what you did, and no way to award extra marks. So with question five, I'm going to type directly into the calculator, one, one, seven, eight, zero, zero, divide by 1.28. And that's going to show the answer on the calculator screen. But then when you come to write the answer on the exam paper, write down all of these numbers you've written to the calculator, the one, the one, the seven, the eight, zero, the zero, the divide, the one, the decimal eight, get all of that written down, write the equal sign, and then write your final answer. And again, you can get loads of marks, even if you make a mistake. So we have 92,031 pounds and 25 pence. And there's no rating for this question. That's the end of decimal places. So question five means that a house was bought for 92,000 pounds. Then it went up by 28%. And now it's worth 117,000 pounds, which is a pretty good profit. Ouch! This is why in some videos I like explain scratches. <laughs>